In the problem slot is the far card. This may be a sign of you romanticizing something that is far away from you, which could be a sign of what you had in the past. Now in the short term slot is the hot card, and we can see that Grova is facing the heat with boldness and making a healthy choice. Now if these truly are the only two choices available to you, and those two choices are exploring what could be versus pining over what was, well, I think you know what I'm getting at. Now the top card in the long term slot can speak of ascension, perhaps an acknowledgement that something about making this choice is going to improve something about you. Could be your confidence, could be your self-image, could just be your understanding of relationships. In any case, I feel this is the cards telling you this is an opportunity for personal growth and exploration. Good luck to you. The Sesamero has spoken. The 17 of Ladybugs in the problem slot suggests a focus on the needs of the many. A noble ideal in itself, but why is that put it in the problem slot? For answers, let's turn to the lemonade card in the short term slot. Now, Zoe would love it if everybody enjoyed her lemonade. However, if Zoe was to give away the lemonade, she'd be doing so at the expense of her time, effort, and resources. This is why Zoe instead chooses to offer the lemonade at a reasonable price. An acknowledgement that her time, effort, and resources also hold value. And if Zoe doesn't get the time and resources to make lemonade, then nobody's getting lemonade. Now, in the long term solution is the mop. A firm and direct reminder that you should always prepare a space for yourself. Clearly, you are focused on making sure that your acts do good for other people. So, to paraphrase, do unto yourself as you would do for others. Be good to yourself. You deserve it. The Sesamero has spoken. Now, the Great Pentagon in the problem slot, uh, being followed immediately by Bert with his Pentagon birdhouses, is sort of like a direct answer right there. So we're looking for an inscrutable, intriguing mystery that somehow produces birdhouses with Bert holding a blue bird. Followed up closely thereafter by the book. A nice, uncomplicated way of spreading information. So in other words, we have a secret to tell. It's a simple message, leaving out the whistles and bells, and it involves a bluebird that reveals a secret. So I think if the Sesame was to have any theme music, it would be... Blue Canary in the outlet by the light switch, who watches over you? Make a little birdhouse in your soul. And not to put too fine a point on it, if you see the like, follow, and share, then get on it. Cause the Susamero told you so. In other words, the Sesame was spoken. The newspaper in the problem card slot gives us maybe a little sign as to where this anxiety is coming from. You've probably heard a lot of bad news and scuttlebutt from folks uh, who continue to share the narrative of the starving artist. However, we're seeing the 13 of macaroons in the short term slot, a reminder that many people can look at the same situation and see different stuff. So the real question is, when you look to your future as an artist, do you see an opportunity to do things that you are truly passionate about, or do you see this as a bit of fun at the expense of your fiscal future? I mean, not everybody wants to be rich, but some people do. There's nothing wrong with that. Which brings us to the three of webs. When a spider spins a web, it is to cast a net into the universe to get the things which sustain them. And if the passion that sustains you is art, then casting a net in that direction is never the wrong choice. The Sesamero has spoken. In the problem slot is the circle card featuring Cookie Monster. Now, for a variety of reasons, Cookie Monster has become the trickster figure in the Sesamero, perhaps speaking to an anxiety that your dreams are trying to trick you into a false path, or perhaps we're meant to see the Cookie Monster as lucky enough to be demonstrating circles with his favorite thing, a cookie. And how dare any of us be lucky enough to get the thing that we want. Now, in the short-term slot is Super Grover flying high. Super Grover only lands when there's a problem, so if he's flying, there must be no problem. At least it is not your dreams that are the problem. See, in the long-term slot, it's the tie. A reminder that dreams do not become reality on their own. Think of the tie as representing your ambition and willingness to do the work. Everyone deserves to dream big. But dreams don't come true by magic. So make sure your tie is at least as big as your cape. The Sesamero has spoken. In the problem slot, we see the count pointing to the number 9. Now, this is an interesting card for a number of reasons. First, this is a card actually meant to demonstrate the letter N, not the number 9. Secondly, the count likes to count, but there are not 9 signs. There is only one sign pointing to the number 9. This may be a sign that we're going about this whole problem the wrong way. 
The purple rectangle speaks of rash emotional decisions made under pressure. Maybe this is an invitation to sort of look at this problem from another angle. Is it possible, for example, to make sacrifices and cut back on your expenses? Or to get a job that gets you the knowledge, exposure, and context that you need to accomplish your long-term project? I believe the ten of soccer balls represents what could happen if you find a way to do this. These soccer balls are made up of hexagons and pentagons, signs of life and mystery, respectively. And of course, it's ten objects, which means the count can count them. So, all in all, a sign of satisfactory fulfillment. The Sesamero has spoken. The big card in the problem slot suggests this is definitely not just hyperbole. That said, I find it interesting that all of Big Bird's solutions to this big problem involve Snuffy, his very good friend. With the big message being, don't be afraid to lean on your friends. However, these cards also speak of making self-care a priority. For example, declutter your personal space and keep it neat. And don't forget to do things for yourself that feel cozy and comfortable, even if they don't make sense to others. And once you set up a routine, maintain it with consistency. Think of routine as like a ritual that you do every day to help you maintain a sense of normalcy. This is what will help you establish that baseline of mental wellness. From there, do everything in its appropriate place and time. Only worry about grades and finances when it's time to worry about grades and finances. And when it's not, don't. The Sesamero has spoken. Hey there, how's it going? Hey, listen, do you want to get a Sesamero reading, but you don't feel like getting one of those there uh, TikTok uh, accounts? You, you know, I, I completely understand. Listen, there's a way you can do that. Go to the uh, link that's in my bio, uh, and uh, you can actually order uh, a, a Sesamero reading from Intermemo. Uh, or if you don't like Sesamero, but you just want me to talk to you or whatever, you know, there's a, you can do that too. A lot of options available for you. Check the, check the link in my bio. The Four of Beanies suggests this problem is one based around fellowship. Perhaps your mother is upset because you no longer wear the same beanie that she does. But see, that's her attempt to define you within the context of her thing. I believe that's why the short-term solution is Grova rocking out on the guitar. It is inviting you to make a loud, clear declaration of who it is you are and how little that relies on her desires and ideals. Give her the opportunity to understand that it is not your responsibility to make yourself fit into her narrative. Now, while the white square could be a sign of no contact, I believe it instead represents an ideal goal in this situation, which is to establish a baseline of normalcy. And that can still happen so long as she's willing to abandon her fantasy and accept your reality. Either way, I believe that you are on your path to your new normal. Good luck. The Sesamero has spoken. Well, this feels really on the nose. See, the octagon is the most complicated shape in the Sesamero. I feel like this is a sign that you've put a lot on your plate, and you know this. And the change from pink to white suggests that you're making this decision with your heart. And you know what? It's good to be passionate. It's good to want things. Your desires and your passions can actually guide you in this life. But what happens if you just want everything? So I believe the transition from pink to white is an invitation for you to stop and think. And to do something you're probably not going to want to do, which is prioritize. Determine what can be focused on now versus what can be focused on later after you've established those other things. In the sandwich in the long-term slot is a reminder to sustain yourself through all of this. First and foremost should be your survival, mental health, and well-being. Chill, meditate, come up with a game plan, then have a snack. The Sesamero has spoken. What we've got here is an interesting case where the solution rhymes with the problem. And in the middle is the push card, represented by Zoe doing uh, that thing Sisyphus likes to do. A Sisyphean task, if you will. <laughs> I believe what's being said here is that regardless of which path you take, uh, there's a great effort ahead of you. You can either choose to lead a double life and keep your true self bottled up, or live your truth very far away from your support network. In these situations, it's best to focus on what you stand to gain. The support of your family is nice to have, but is it worth having it if it's contingent upon you being unhappy? Meanwhile, self-sufficiency is difficult, but it gets easier over time. So I believe the message here is just take the work you're going to have to do as a given and focus instead on what you want the results of that work to be. Because either way, you will reap what you sow. The Sesamero has spoken. While the red triangle can be a sign of passionate thought, 
It is also the alchemical sign for fire or flames, and in the context of a man with moth-like qualities, could also mean that you're seeking signs of attraction, in which case you may be in luck. As the Sesamero indicates, Mothman's posterior has the potential power of 15 dump trucks. A lot of thang to back up. However, I believe the Three of Webs serves as a warning. For you see, Mothman is built for function, not form. And these glorious glutes are there to draw in and capture his prey. So if you do indeed hear the clap-clap clapping of cheeks upon the night air, I would advise you to seek cover. They say the quickest route to a Mothman's heart is through his stomach. You are free to test that theory at your own risk. The Sesamero has spoken. The full card in the problem slot is uh, pretty cut and dry. You have had your fill of this self-serving behavior coming from other people. Now, in the short-term slot, we're seeing a ducky at the top of a ladder. I believe this is a sign that you need to acknowledge why people are taking you for granted in the first place. It's because you are the go-to person for all the things they keep asking you to do, and you have been undervaluing your contribution towards their goals. So the first and most important step is to know your worth. Politely but firmly refuse to sell yourself short. Now in the long-term slot is the four of beanies, a sign that you need to work towards being seen as a peer and not a resource. Now, in a proper group of peers, everybody's needs are being met. Let them know if they want you to contribute to their success, then they also have to contribute to yours. Go get what you deserve. The Sesamero has spoken. In the problem slot is the low Super Grover. The presence of this card in the problem slot is very hairy, because you see, Super Grover only lands when there's a problem to solve, uh, but on top of it, we also know that he's pretty good at bungling things and making things worse. So I feel like you got a bit of a mess on your hands here. Now, I believe the Three of Fish is a reminder that there are three entities that need to be involved here to make this right. Me, you, and us. Your desire to mend things is a good start. That's one. Number two is that your birth giver should share this desire. And number three is that it has to be a shared desire to get to the same place. It also means both of you may have to compromise on some points. Now, if you're willing to meet that problem head on as a school of three fish, then the nearness you desire can most certainly happen. Just remember, be patient. You may bungle it a couple times before you get it right. You might not get it right immediately, but keep trying and you'll get it right eventually. The Sesamero has spoken. I believe the circle card in the problem slot represents your mother. She has two cookies, and she wants to believe both of those cookies are good, delicious treats that she loves very much. Even if one of them might have raisins in it. Now, the short-term card's kind of on the nose. It's the rainbow, and features Rosita pointing to the rainbow. Uh, uh, rainbow. This is you saying, this is who I am. This does not change. Which is good. You shouldn't lie to your mother. But it really is on her to acknowledge this truth. Now, the Eight of Bats often represents confronting an irrational fear, but I'm having a hard time nailing it down, so let's draw a clarification card. Okay, so perhaps your mother fears that this is a big mess that needs to be cleaned up. And rather than doing the work required to accept the reality of the situation, she's seeking to put all the labor on you. And if you'd like to help with this, that's fine, but just remember, it's not your responsibility. Apologies are for doing harm, not for speaking truth. The Sesamero has spoken. Oh, how you doing? Hey, listen, if you like the stuff I'm doing, hey, check the link in my bio. I do lots of other stuff, too. You know, I, I make art, I, uh, I do music, I, uh, you know, I make t-shirts and stickers and stuff like that. Why don't you go check it out? It's, it's a whole lot of fun. I hope you pay the bills, too. I appreciate you. Thanks for taking a look in advance, unless you didn't, in which, uh, please... Alright, so when I first saw the night card come up, I won't lie, I thought the Sesamero was saying, yeah, this is a problem. However, after reading the full spread, I think it's just the Sesamero reading the question aloud. See, the short-term slot is the top card, which sort of indicates that the uh, nighttime is actually the best time to do it. I mean, for one thing, there's less traffic. And think of all the interesting stories you leave in your wake every time you stop for drive through And speaking of drive through the long-term slot is the dish card. Which, to continue the trend of on-the-nose cards in this draw here, uh, is a pretty clear indication that, hey, you need to eat, though. That said, the emptiness of the dish also tells a tale. Perhaps that this uh, corpse delivery service of yours is just something you're doing until a better opportunity comes along. 
you know, which is fine. And if you left the drive through kids with interesting stories, just think of the interesting stories you're going to leave with your interviewers. In any case, good luck to you. The Sesamero has spoken. The problem is given context by the day card. Ernie looks outside, sees it's a bright sunny day with many possibilities. But where to start? Now in the short term slot we have the 12 of doodlebugs. Notice how the doodlebugs have arranged themselves in a way that f sort of forms a cohesive group dynamic. I believe this is a sign that your dreams, and indeed your total life path, do not exist in a vacuum. I believe this is a sign to consider the sort of people you'd like to surround yourself with on your life path and focus on the aspirations that will lead you towards those opportunities. Then, with that path chosen, we look to the long-term slot, which is the hat. A nice wide-brimmed hat is a good thing to wear on a sunny day. I believe this is a reminder that you will need to prepare for and dress for whatever path you choose. I mean, why become a scientist if you're not going to look any good in a lab coat? And if your aspirations include a lot of cool t-shirts, then hey, check my bio, I might be able to help you out. Good luck, the Sesamero has spoken. Now, I've often said in the past, the presence of Oscar doesn't necessarily mean something bad. But, of course, it doesn't always mean not bad, either. And this is the problem card. I believe the sandwich itself represents the job, i.e. the thing that sustains you, and the capitalism is represented by Oscar. And I believe the short-term card, the Green Oval, is pointing at Oscar. I mean, Oscar's unhygienic by nature, and he knows what's good for him is not necessarily what's good for you. So no matter how delicious and filling that sandwich looks... Logic dictates that it is still being handed to you by the garbage guy. And speaking of cold blue logic, I believe the Sesamero is inviting you to stop and think about this critically. Now that you have this information, what are you going to do with it? Because every moment you spend to ponder this question, you're only going to get hungrier. And that's just going to make the sandwich look tastier. The Sesamero has spoken. The pull card in the problem slot shows that you got a lot of work ahead of you. This is not to discourage you. This is to say, be prepared. Because let's face it, any honorable goal is worth the effort. Speaking of effort, it's easier to not do a thing if you're using that energy you would have done to do the thing on something else. Which is why I believe the guitar card in the short term slot is inviting you to take up a hobby. Something perhaps that will occupy your mind and give you a place to focus your thoughts. Plus, I can speak from personal experience, art supplies are a much better investment than uh, tobacco. Finally, we come to the long-term slot, the watch. A simple reminder that these things take time. Habits are hard to break, and it doesn't happen overnight, so be patient with yourself. Addiction, like many maladies, requires time to heal. Be good to yourself. The Sesamero has spoken. I believe the yellow rectangle in the problem slot is speaking of self-imposed pressures. In other words, you have reason to believe that the other shoe could drop at any moment. And I believe the yo-yo in the short-term solution slot does not necessarily disagree with that assessment. The thing is, a yo-yo always has its ups and downs. And if the only part of a yo-yo you focused on was the part where it goes down, well, that would just be a yo. You gotta recognize that most of the effort that goes into playing with a yo-yo is bringing it back up again. And as you get good at it, you can bring the yo-yo back up quicker and with more flair. Now, the 20 of stars speaks of an endless galaxy of possibilities. And more importantly, it's a positive sign that you have the opportunity to shine through all of them. History and literature tells many stories of people that had bad things happen to them. But the stories we best remember are the ones about the problem solvers. Prepare for your hero's journey. The Sesamero has spoken. The x-ray in the problem slot redefines the question. Basically, we're looking for a creepy way to cause extinction. The Sesamero has indeed been handed a grave task. In the short-term slot is the three of fishes, a reminder that if you're going to do this, you're probably not going to be able to do it alone. One haunted Furby may not be enough. You may need at least three. And they must be haunted by a diverse pool of souls. A wide spectrum of harrowing experiences to be drawn from. After all, dooming an entire planet's ecosystem is not what you'd call a straightforward process. You gotta be ready to quickly maneuver around unexpected snags in the plan. Then in the long-term slot, we got the orange hexagon. Now, the hexagon is a sign of life, and orange is not what I'd call the best color, given the circumstances. See, I think a haunted committee driving along Furby could get the job done. The Sesamero has spoken, and may Henson have mercy on our souls.